Hello, my name is Ken Sullivan and welcome to SpaceX History. Six, five, four, three, ignition and liftoff. I would like you to meet SpaceX's new Falcon 5 rocket. The Falcon 5 rocket is an amazing new rocket designed by Elon Musk and his new startup company, SpaceX. Currently, SpaceX only has the Falcon 1 rocket getting ready to launch for the very first time. But before we get into the Falcon 1 and the new Falcon 5, let's back up a little bit and get some quick history. Elon Musk grew up in South Africa and taught himself coding, selling his first source code for $500 when he was only 12 years old. Later, Elon and his brother Kimball founded Zip2, which was acquired by Compact in 1999 for $307 million. Elon used some of that money to help co-found XCOM, which would later become PayPal, and the rest to pursue a new idea in 2001. And the idea was, was called Mars Oasis, where we would put a small robotic lander on the surface of Mars with seeds and dehydrated nutrient gel that would hydrate upon landing, and you'd have uh, plants growing in a Martian uh, radiation and gravity conditions. And this would be the furthest that life's ever traveled and the first life on Mars, so pretty significant. Uh, so I made three visits to, to Moscow, to Russia, uh, to look at, at buying a, a Russian uh, launch. There were so many complications associated with the deal that, that I, 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 it, it didn't, I wasn't comfortable with the risks associated with it. What Elon was comfortable with was making his own rockets. In May 2002, at the age of 30, Elon Musk founded SpaceX. At the SpaceX headquarters in El Segundo, California, Elon Musk gathered a small team of select engineers. Among them, notable names like Jim Contrell, Tom Mueller, Hans Koenigsmann, and Gwynne Shotwell. They wanted to revolutionize the rocket launch industry by reducing the cost to get to space by incorporating reusability. In October 2002, five months after SpaceX was founded, Elon Musk sold PayPal. That influx of capital helped SpaceX and its 30 employees build the Falcon rocket, which Elon unveiled in Washington, D.C. on December 3, 2003. During this unveiling, Elon Musk also announced plans for a larger and more powerful rocket called the Falcon 5. This five-engine monster would be the first time since the Saturn V that NASA had engine-out capabilities with the rocket. The Falcon 5 also meant that SpaceX's original single-engine Falcon rocket would now be known as the Falcon 1. Falcon 5 was just one of many ideas. Space capsules, using three Falcon 1 first stages to make a Falcon 1 Heavy, and the Falcon 1E rocket. The Falcon 1 would be used to verify engine performance, rocket structure, and design concepts, while the Falcon 1E would be a larger rocket with a bigger engine and incorporate the reusability that SpaceX was aiming for. The Falcon 5 could lift 4,200 kilograms to low Earth orbit with its five Merlin engines on the first stage and two Kestrel second stage engines. It would then use parachutes to recover the first stage, and Elon expected the first Falcon 5 to fly in November 2005. In 2003, SpaceX leased the rocket testing facilities in McGregor, Texas to begin testing the Merlin and Kestrel engines. Both the Merlin and Kestrel engines use liquid oxygen and RP-1 for fuel. The Merlin 1A is an ablatively cooled engine that produces 340 kilonewtons of thrust while only weighing 760 kilograms. Compared to an engine on Boeing's new 737-600, which weighs 2,370 kilograms and produces only 87 kilonewtons of thrust, and you can see the Merlin 1A engine is quite amazing. The Kestrel engine is a pressure-fed engine weighing in at 52 kilograms and producing 31 kilonewtons of force. In 2004, SpaceX listed its first customer for the Falcon 5. Bigelow Aerospace would launch a payload on a more powerful version of Falcon 5 that would have upgraded Merlin 1B engines. The second stage will have a single Merlin vacuum engine replacing the two Kestrel engines. On May 5, 2004, SpaceX had a significant win when Elon Musk testified before the U.S. Senate concerning NASA awarding Kistler Aerospace a contract without allowing other companies to bid. NASA was forced to retract that contract and later awarded a portion of it to SpaceX. Epic ideas filled 2005. A nine-engine rocket appropriately named Falcon 9, the Falcon 9 S5 having two Falcon 5 boosters and a Falcon 9 center core, or the Falcon 9 S9, which will use three Falcon 9 rockets to send more than 24,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. SpaceX also announced their Dragon capsule, which will carry seven astronauts to space by 2010. 
SpaceX is also planning on streamlining production by having both the Falcon 5 and the Falcon 9 use the same size core. But to top it off, in 2005, the code word for BFR was heard, an idea for a heavy lift rocket that could launch 100 tons into orbit. Meanwhile, SpaceX had been preparing Vandenberg Air Force Base in California for the very first launch of Falcon 1. Which brings us back to 2006 and an exciting time for SpaceX. SpaceX now has 160 employees and they have new plans for a Merlin 1C engine. The Merlin 1C will be regeneratively cooled and produce 420 kilonewtons of thrust. This should allow the Falcon 9S9 to lift more than 29,000 kilograms into orbit. Now there have been some scheduling conflicts at Vandenberg, so SpaceX has brought the Falcon 1 out to Omelik Island of the Kwajalein Atoll in the Marshall Islands. We are ready for liftoff and welcome to SpaceX's first launch with our Falcon 1 rocket. It's a beautiful Friday here on Omelette Island, weather will be no problem. On board is the 19.5 kilogram Falcon Sat 2 built by the students at the U.S. Air Force Academy. This satellite will study the effects of plasma on communication with spacecraft. We are just moments away from ignition and this is an onboard camera looking down the side of Falcon 1 rocket. Clearly a course deviation. Unfortunately, the Merlin 1A engine began to leak fuel and approximately T plus 33 seconds, the engine failed and vehicle control was lost. We learn by doing, Falcon 1 is a test bed, and hopefully the second launch will be successful. Progress continues though, and Elon has announced an update to the SpaceX crew capsule. SpaceX has built a prototype flight crew capsule that includes a thoroughly tested 30 man day life support system. This is a significant step forward. In addition, on August 18, 2006, NASA awarded SpaceX one of its COTS demonstration contracts. SpaceX will receive up to $278 million to develop a Cargo Dragon space capsule for commercial resupply missions to the International Space Station. More big news as SpaceX has now signed a lease with the U.S. Air Force to use Launch Complex 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. And now we're going to head back to Omelette Island. Welcome back to Omelik Island this fine Wednesday, March 21st. It's a little bit of a windy Wednesday and slightly overcast today, but weather is a go for Falcon 1's second test flight as we prepare for its Demo 2 mission today. Nearly a full year has passed since the first Falcon 1 test flight, and launch preps are finishing up as the transporter rector finishes retracting. We are just moments from liftoff as we tune into the SpaceX team to listen along with their callouts. And the LE is retracted. First stage tank pressure Ten. nominal. Second Nine. stage tank pressure Eight. nominal. Seven, six, five, First stage four, engine sequence initiated. Three, two, one. We have liftoff. We have liftoff. Falcon has cleared the tower. Pitch over. First stage. Engine performance nominal. Liftoff is looking great. This is about the time they had that problem on the first launch, but everything looks solid. Velocity 128 meters per second, altitude 2.6 kilometers. Guidance nominal. Quadrillant RF telemetry lock nominal.
we're coming up to the one minute mark, and this First is stage engine performance on there. You just heard the call out, everything is nominal. As I was saying, this launch is looking amazing. Max Q. Vehicles passing through Max Q. Velocity 450 meters per second, altitude 13.9 kilometers. Look at that engine plume expanding as that atmospheric pressure reduces. That's so cool. Merlin engine performance nominal. This is awesome. SpaceX is going to knock it out of the park with a success on only their second launch attempt. Those pulsing sounds are a little bit weird, but they're saying everything's nominal. Coming up on stage separation. Yes, stage separation. Separ stage, stage is unseparated. Oh no. No, 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 no. Oh my. Second stage ignition confirmed. Did you see? Stage one hit the exhaust nozzle on stage two. It looked like it knocked it off course. But stage two seems to have corrected and it appears everything's okay. Second stage engine ignition nozzle. Coming up on fairing separation. Fairing separation is confirmed. Copy. Bearing set confirmed. That bearing separation was really cool. Vehicle velocity is 2634 meters Number per cards. second, altitude 117 S kilometers. Second stage engine performance nominal. I guess everything's good. Let's look at that separation in slow motion. Wow, how did that second stage recover? That's awesome. Another look. A little bit slower. Second stage engine performance nominal. Yeah, guidance nominal too. Well, that was scary, but all looks good now. I don't know how the second stage recovered, but as you hear the call outs, everything seems to be going just fine. Yep. Velocity 2778 meters per second, altitude 161 kilometers down. Little oscillations going on. Guidance nominal. Seems to be getting worse. Telemetry lock on both stages. This is not good. That roll definitely is not good. And that's it. SpaceX has confirmed that this second flight has failed. With that bumpy separation, the oscillations continue to grow worse, leading to a premature Kestrel engine shutdown and no orbit was obtained. On the bright side, Elon has said that the Merlin 1A engine worked perfectly. And as we wrap up this first episode of SpaceX history, welcome to Hawthorne. It is October of 2007 and SpaceX has taken over a 747 construction facility about 10 kilometers away from the Los Angeles International Airport. This larger facility has 51,000 square meters to work with and will allow SpaceX tremendous growth. Thank you for watching. Please join me in the next episode, 2008 or Die Trying, as we progress chronologically with SpaceX history.